thought you had a hammy. Yeah, I had to have a uh, footprint gas pedal installed. So I stole this pile. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. So, pretty exciting day, or maybe I should say week. Because, as you saw in the last video, we got the van painted. That means we can finish up on the interior here. So, uh, we got our carpet in. We'll be installing that probably in this video. We already went through. We installed the glass, which this really sucked. A couple little gaps I'm not thrilled with, even though, like, all this is new and everything. But we'll circle back to that. Um, we can put the door handles on. We can put the door panels on. We can put the bubbles in here. We're going to pull the rims. We're going to paint the calipers and the drums in the back. We are going to be undercoating up underneath also in the wheel wells. What else? We can finish off the back in there. But uh, for, for today, I'm mostly going to concentrate on the driver's side. Because uh, as you can see, I'm uh, about like three feet off the wall. I want to get the side all done, move the van back over so we can get it out. Because as it is right now, I cannot open the rear doors. So, really can't work on the back. So, we're going to start piecing this together, and I will keep you in the loop, show you where we end up. Working here on the emblems, we got these little tiny push pins, and they pretty much just uh, push right into place. Probably want to hold the back so you don't bend the metal, but I found pushing them in with a piece of cardboard. Just like this. Ah, and you're good. So, I'm going to get the emblems on in three, two, one. And there we are. It's the Chevy Van SS. A little bit of red should look good once I do this uh, break here and in the back. Like I said, I might end up doing red pinstriping on the outside, but that's going to be after it's cut and buffed. So yeah, big fan. Alright guys, next day here. Yesterday we were rolling, and by rolling I mean we weren't rolling the camera. But, uh, both sides are in the same state. As you can see, got our emblems on. We got some mirrors on. I'm uh, pretty sure you saw all the glass in. Got some door handles. We got some door locks. Hold on. Is this locked? Nope. We got our panels in here. Uh, we are switching out the stock uh, handles. We do have some nice, like, Chineseium, aluminum looking things. They're, they're pretty sweet looking, but with all new gaskets and felt and everything in here, these are really, really tight. You pretty much got to two hand them. And uh, yeah, so we're rolling right along. Uh, next up, I think I think we're gonna work on the back a little bit. Uh, we're gonna throw the back, we're gonna throw the back tail lights on. So I think that'll look pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot open these doors. I don't know. Nah, even if I roll forward, I can't. So we're gonna get the tail lights mounted in place. That's two screws. I'm not gonna record that. Then we're gonna put the bezels on and let's see how it looks. We have our little homemade uh, light in. So obviously, uh, because these are Mustang lights, we can't use the original gasket because uh, this is all new metal here. So uh, for our purposes, we're just gonna use some of this gasketing material, wrap it around it. We're gonna get the tail light in place, which is gonna suck because no one's here. So I'm gonna be going monkeying my way through the window, trying to hold it out here while I tighten it in there, vice versa. So we're gonna skip all that. That seems boring to watch. I'll show you the finished product. So who puts Ford Mustang taillights on a Chevy G10 boogie van? Huh? Huh? That's right. This guy. Like him or not, they're there to stay. Next up, we just taped up and resprayed this front end because uh, hopefully we'll paint the grill. We're going to metal flake that, kind of like the stripes, and uh, maybe get that on this weekend. But once this dries, we're going to mount the headlights, we're going to mount the fog lights, and uh, maybe find a home for the air horn. We'll see. A few minutes later, we got some lights in. See if they work. Oh, that's bright. That's brighter. Game on. 
You guys want to really watch me grind these down? I can record it. It's a good time. Or we'll just skip it. It's been a minute. So here's where we're at. We went through underneath. We undercoated the whole wheel well and everything. And then we uh, we actually did the frame and everything else under here with the... Uh, what did we use? Oh, rust reformer. And then we used the rusty metal primer on the center. And we're also uh, doing the drums with the rusty metal primer. And since we're very impatient... We got the heat gun, so we're going to speed up the primer process so we can get some paint on here. But in the meantime, um, I think this is dry. Yeah. I got a plan. I'll be right back. While our primer is dry now, we can jump back over here to the front where our spray paint's dry. And uh, we're going to utilize a bunch of these existing holes. This hole here was for the charcoal canister. We don't need any more, so we're gonna mount the compressor there. This hole here, we just augged out. We're gonna run the hose through back to the compressor. This hole was existing. This is the only hole that we had to drill. So, what we're gonna do is, here's our air horn. We are gonna mount our air horn here. That hole, the hose is gonna run through over to the compressor, and we're gonna build a bracket for here. I really want this outside because that's where it's going to be the loudest. So I'm going to get some nuts and bolts. I'm going to mount the back in place, figure out how big a bracket I need to make, and jump on that. Change of plans. Now that I look at this, now that it's all mounted in, um, I think we're going to have an issue. If you look here, my grill runs right here, here to here. That's going to be in the way. I know it is. So, trying to come up with a new game plan for the air horn. That was fun while it lasted. It would have looked great there. Not going to lie. All right, guys. So, bear with me here. This might be hard to see, but I'm going to show you where we ended up. So, as you saw, I couldn't mount it here in the front. So, I ended up going underneath. Uh, I got this little lip right here. That was an existing hole. And I just built a little, you know, two-post bracket. I drilled a hole here so up underneath we have the air horn now and then I drilled a hole here and we got the compressor right there just barely fit under the radiator we took the negative post just ground it to the mount so now uh, if we go over here and find our horn which is right there we're gonna run our horn down to it and theoretically when we hit the button this should work you guys will find out in five seconds Okay guys, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, just got done wiring up the horn and I see absolutely no reason why it will not work. I have not tried it out yet, so let's do this together. Connect the battery, I'm going to set you down right here. If you hear something, let me know. That's a win. It's officially getting dark. These are still a little tacky, but that's not going to stop me from bringing them in the house and painting them tonight. So, uh, you know what? I have one more part I can throw in here just for fun that you guys haven't seen. So, I'm going to run down to the basement and grab that. I'm not going to show you me installing it because it's really simple. Two nuts and bolts. But hopefully you'll appreciate it. So, I'll be right back. All right, admit it. You didn't see that coming. Pretty cool. Next day here, you can see we got our centers painted. We painted our drums up here last night in the living room. And we got a little blast from the past we're going to be slapping on here. I don't know if you guys remember these ladder bars or traction bars or whatever you want to call them. But they're going on. Just a couple nuts and bolts. Nothing special. Slap these on. Slap the drums on, see how everything looks. Well, if I knew how to do a happy dance, I'd be doing one, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty good with that. So moving on to polishing this rim, we're gonna be trying this uh, Chemical Guys Heavy Metal Polish. Me personally, I've never used it. This is a brand new bottle, so uh, I'm just gonna do a little section here, show you guys how it looks, and uh, then we'll go from there. Oh. 
apparently there's a cap on this. So we're just gonna. Looks good. I'm gonna circle back to that cap. All right, I spent about 45 minutes on her. It's about as good as she's gonna get. You know, for old rims that I got for free, I ain't bitching, they'll work. So, let me go do the other one, get these mounted on, and see how it all comes together. Here's a little before action. Yeah, they're okay. Let's roll down to the after. I am not really uh, too upset with that. I think it looks pretty good. So, uh, I think uh, once I throw the other tire on, we're going to jump on the side pipes. I mean, it's jacked up in the air. Before I drop down the back end and lift up the front, might as well get the pipes on her. So, I'll be down in the basement. We're piped. Man, I can't believe these are the same rims. Look at that crappy patina compared to that nice gloss. Yep, we're going to be working on that rim tomorrow. But for now, it's late. It's dark. We're going in. Okay, guys, it is Friday. It's around 3.30, and we just finished our day job. So we're going to be starting on our night job. So set my goals really low for today, so they should be easy to achieve. First thing we're going to do, if you look at the rims, See how those points face backwards? See how those face not backwards? So we're going to jack this thing up because I just took it down off the of jack stands, of course. And uh, we're going to swap the back tires. Then we're going to pull the front tires. We are going to be painting the calipers red, center caps red, and undercoating the inside up in there. So uh, that's all boring. I wouldn't want to watch it. I'm not going to make you guys watch it. So... Trust me, it's going to get done, and you'll see in five seconds. Okay, uh, I'm a little confused here. So, the point points backwards. That's good. I'm going to run over here. The point points backwards. That's good. We're going to run to this side. The point points backwards. That's good. We just took this tire off and uh, the point points backwards if it's on this side. So uh, I guess somewhere, someone along the line uh, damaged the rim and they could only find a rear driver. So I got two rear drivers. No big deal. We're going to go put this back on. I would definitely say my sway bar bushings have seen better days. These look like marshmallows. Well, what's left of them. So while we got that off. We might as well, uh, might as well paint it red. They already got the red paint out. Alright guys, next day here. So, our game plan for today. We're going to get uh, all the front back together. We got the sway bar. We pulled that off, painted that. We have new bushings. I only had, uh, well, ironically, I have three of these. But, I'm going to have to reuse two of the original mounts. As you can see, this mount is absolutely waffled and looks like it hit something. So we don't need that. Bushings were bad. So game plan. We're going to get all the front end back together. And then we're going to start working on the inside. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to get the passenger seat. Mount that. Because if you look over here, you see I had to cut the wood. Probably going to have to do it here. Get the front seats in. Pull them out. We have to mount our center seat here. Uh, get that drilled in. And then hopefully get the carpet. Which is going to take a while. I've done a van before. And uh, it sucks. But luckily, it's an absolutely gorgeous day. It's like 80 degrees out. We have a rogue chicken. Hey, buddy. What? Come here. So, yeah. Screw the chicken. We're going to get back to work. You follow me? Pretty happy with that. Pretty happy. So, uh, we're all good up here. Rams and tires are on. We're going to drop this on the ground. And then we're going to reset, and then jump on the inside. Next on the agenda, since we have the jail cell, we're going to need the electric chair. So, yeah, I'm going to have to build a, obviously, I'm going to cut the legs off. I'm going to build a metal base, weld it right to the chair. This, uh, this is detachable, 
So I will be able to pull this right out of here and uh, it'll be nice and flat. So uh, we're not really worried about the chair right now, but we want to get the base drilled in before we put the carpet down because we really want to get the carpet down today. So yeah, this chair, it is going to go a little bit lower. I am looking for a, like, uh, they sell these Halloween prop transformers. I do want to put one on the wall somewhere. Yeah, probably on that side. I don't know. They make sparks and everything. Pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to be on the lookout for that. But in the meantime, I got the base pretty much right where I want it. So I'm going to pull the chair, mark it, drill in here, and uh, test fit it. So let's go. All right, we are golden. We are drilled through. Didn't secure it, but everything clears. Now, like I was saying before, this is a detachable base seat. In case I don't want it in here, you just pull these two pins. That's all you got is the plate. So, I think I'm probably going to carpet over everything. And, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll just lay the plate down and then glue carpet to the plate. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Got this epic piece I just threw on. Yeah, baby. All right, it's uh really, really close. It's right on the edge, but um, I think because of, because of how thick the carpet that I got is, I think I'm gonna give myself like a paint stick depth all the way around. So I'm gonna be cutting both of these and pull the seat out, and we're gonna grab some carpet. Yeehaw! We got some carpet going on, and uh, yeah, it is thick. So I was going to start stapling in the back to staple into the plywood before I start spraying these into the front, but I only have quarter inch staples and they are doing nothing to this shag carpet. I mean, even when I uh, go through and finally expose the bottom, I staple through and between the insulation, it's not even hold on to the plywood. So I'm going to have to run to the store, but I think I'm going to get this kind of all cut and laying down flat in the meantime. There's still a lot I can do because I can staple all the way up to the pillar and then I start spray adhesiving. So uh, I'm going to start doing that, getting it all cut. Basically, uh, I got to cut flat here and around. This all gets pieced in. I've done it before. It sucks. takes time, but we'll get there. We got all night. So I'm going to start cutting. Somebody may or may not have gotten a little yellow overspray on one of their seats that they left in the van and forgot to cover. But we're going to circle back to that. In the meantime, we are all uh, rough cut in. Still got to go back and do these gunnels and everything. I might change up these footwells. Might go yellow fur. I don't know. We'll see. But next, we are going to scab a piece of wood into here. So we have something to staple to. I'm not sure if there was a reason why this is cut like a half an inch short. But I'm going to get this piece in. I'll, uh, I'll close the door, make sure everything lines up. And worst case scenario, I'll just move this piece out. So I'm going to get on that and see in a second. All right, now I see why it was set back. I brought the wood out to the edge and uh, the sides touched just a hair. So I'm going to move it back and the carpet will seal it. It'll be good. All right, guys, it's been a minute since I grabbed the camera, but it's 1.30 in the morning. I figured I'd show you where we're at. All the carpet is done, 100%. They even did like the heater core and everything, now that you can see. There's some thresholds in here. We got our door sills in. We just went with this grip tape. Worked out good because uh, there's only four inches, but the seam is underneath this, so can't see it at all. We got one seat in, as much as I'd love to put the other seat in. Uh, I gotta clean it, because it's got all over spray. So, uh, that's going to be tomorrow. So, in order for us to finish up the front, we, uh, we have these little pieces here that are hanging on the wall over there. And, unfortunately, they're blue. So, going to clean them, paint them, slap them on here. No big deal. Put the other seat in after we clean it. Put the motor cover on. Put this piece on here. And uh, then we're going to wrap the steering wheel, I think, with the uh, carpet. And then we have to put the bottom rail on here for the jailhouse. Real easy. And then the gasket for the gullwing door, which is real easy. So tomorrow should be a really, really easy day as far as finishing up the front end. Now, uh, I probably am going to build some sort of a dash cover. I don't know if I'm going to do it out of 
the diamond tuck material or if I'm gonna use the carpet because I got plenty of carpet left over so we'll see so let's see where we end up tomorrow moving right along and installing a barefoot gas pedal should not be as hard as it is as you can see someone already performed surgery on my gas pedal because I had some aftermarket covers on it anyway but back behind I got these little grooves that I'm gonna have to cut out because this bracket goes straight across so uh yeah this is a extra 10 minutes I wasn't expecting but should look cool gotta do something about that pedal we'll figure it out well that took about 10 minutes but while I was under here I was thinking about painting the steering column cover but then I remembered I got a lot of extra carpet and zip ties so pretty happy with it I don't have to worry about the shifter on the column since we got it there now so yeah I like it next up put this seat in maybe uh, maybe clean a little overspray off the motor since it's so easy to get to right now and uh, then we'll grab the doghouse cover moving right along we threw our motor cover on and we're hooking up the lights so for the lights all I'm doing is put a little velcro on and I have this window up here and uh, trying these out oh man that's gonna look better at night but yeah I'm pretty happy so let's get a couple more pieces so uh, I think this is where we're gonna end the video we finished up the front as you can see all the carpets in through these thresholds on still have a couple little stupid pieces of trim to put on I got little pieces of trim that go here that I just got to clean up uh, I got this door trim here that's drying outside right now a little gasket here to throw on nothing fun but for the most part we got it all knocked out and I'm really thrilled with the uh, the lights the awning lights man they really make a difference it's even gonna look better at night so that's gonna do it guys uh thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and get off the couch and get into the garage honey can we get a new cat oh by the way cost more than a mortgage payment whatever keeps her happy